Hello students, welcome to Legacy AIS Academy. In today's video, we are going to discuss about direct seeding of rice, a novel method of rice cultivation which is being promoted by the Punjab government. And not only Punjab but in other regions of India, this method of rice cultivation has picked up in last 3 to 5 years. So we are going to discuss what does the direct seeding of rice means, how it differs from the traditional method of rice cultivation and despite a lot of advantages and benefits that it offers, why it has not been able to pick up the pace in the north and northwestern India, especially in the state of Punjab. That means what are the challenges the farmers have to face while uh, shifting from traditional method to the direct method of rice seeding. So before that, let us try to understand that why this method is in use. So very recently, the government of Punjab and also the Punjab is one of the lead producer of rice in India. So it has actively promoted the direct seeding of rice also more commonly or more popularly known as the DSR method or locally called as Tar Vattar technique. Now despite several benefits that it offers, the government also is providing incentive to the farmer. This incentives can be as high as Rs 1500 per acre especially we talk about this year, despite the incentive, despite the benefits, the technique is yet to see the widespread adoption among the rice cultivators of Punjab. So if you try to understand this from the figure and facts, what we can see that overall Punjab has about 79 lakh acres of the fields. Out of the 79 lakh acres of field under paddy cultivation, Last year, only 1.73 lakh acres were the area where the direct seeding of rice technique was used. And not only that, given such a kind of poor adoption of this method, this year Punjab government has even revised its target and they have taken a moderate target where they want to achieve just 7 lakh under DSR, cult uh, DSR cultivation, which is overall, we can say less than 10% of the total area under paddy cultivation. So let us try to go into more depth in more depth and detail but before that let us also try to understand that what is the traditional method of rice cultivation which is largely used everywhere in India. So in traditional method of rice cultivation first of all it happens in two stages. In the first stage the paddy farmers they have to prepare nurseries. It is the nursery where the seeding of rice is done and the rice crops are basically uh, allowed to grow for a small period of time. Once the rice crop has grown to a certain extent after sowing, in the second stage that roughly takes place, we can say somewhere in a month, the young seedlings are uprooted and then the replantation is done in the main field where the rice has to be cultivated, rice has to be grown, which is flooded by water because the rice requires a large volume of water. It is a best example of what we refer in geography as a water intensive crop. So this is something that you can see from the picture here. This is the process or the picture that represents the transplantation of rice where earlier rice was grown here and now the people are transplanting it and will move it to the flooded areas, the flooded fields where it has to grow. Now the disadvantage of this traditional method is obviously as the entire rice seedlings or saplings have to be removed and then transplanted to different field, it becomes a very, very labor intensive job. That means a large number of people have to work, have to work in continuously to transplant the seedlings. Apart from that, as we have discussed, this kind of method requires large volume of water in the first stage also when the nursery preparation is being done and even in the second stage when the final cropping is being done. So that becomes a problem especially in such regions where the water scarcity and water deficiency is something that we are able, that we are seeing in India also. Second, what happens if we talk about the advantages? Advantages of this method is the yield is maximum. The highest amount of yield that you can expect, you can expect from these methods and also this method helps in maintaining better health of the rice crop. So basically it is because of these two benefits the people or the farmers basically you can say are still preferring the traditional rice farming. Now let us try to understand also about the direct seeding of rice and how it differs, how it works. So the, in the direct seeding of rice, the first stage of preparation of nursery is completely avoided, is not undertaken. So no nursery preparation and since there is no nursery preparation, obviously there is no need for transplantation. 
and as we have discussed just now the transplantation is an activity that requires maximum labor work maximum labor hours so that is something that also can be cut down to a minimum extent second as the paddy seeds are directly sown in roughly 20 to 30 days prior to when they would have been transplanted and the field is irrigated as well as laser labeled prior to the seeding process which is carried out using a seed drill or also called as lucky seed so in this way this method of rice farming is more scientific it is using lesser amount of labor hours lesser number of workers as well as it is using lesser amount or lesser volume of water so now rice from being a very extremely water intensive crop is using less water and becoming less water intensive crop in this method second we can say that seed treatment that is done here is a very very crucial stage of direct seeding of rice it is basically happens or occurs when the seeds are soaked in a fungic site solution that is roughly for the period of 8 hours and then dried for half a day before sowing it is mostly in the seed treatment where the farmers face a problem because if they do not treat their seed properly what will happen the yield of the rice by the dsr will become very very less especially if you compare with the traditional farming thus if we have to summarize that how dsr is better or what are the benefits of dsr over the traditional rice farming so first of all the green yield in dsr method also scientists have claimed can be higher if proper seed treatment is done if proper uh, this care is done for the seedlings and also even if something is going wrong the yield will be comparable to what you will receive during the traditional seed farm traditional rice farm second the method is easier and faster because obviously it completely obliterates the need for the first stage of traditional rice farming that is the that is the nursery preparation and early maturity compared to the traditional farming of rice so the people and the farmers will be able to get their crops at a much more greater and much more faster rate third as we have discussed the water use efficiency is very very high especially the such kind of method can be sustained with less water to put into perspective from the figure about 15 percent less water is required if you are using the dsr rather than the traditional farm apart from that decreases the greenhouse gas emission because when the rice remains in a wet fields for a long period of time under the stagnant uh, what we can say under the stagnant water conditions for long period of time it releases the methane gas and actually on the earth one of the largest emission source of the methane gas is nothing but the wet paddy fields so by using dsr we will be able to decrease the amount of gh emission which also is good for our environment thus in one way we can say the dsr method over t trans and uh, this traditional method is environment friendly as well now apart from that it maintains better soil physical properties then it is more profitable as the management cost is less we have discussed the major cost of rice cultivation goes into the labor cost so as the labor cost and the labor requirement is less here obviously you can cut down significantly over the input cost and that will translate into higher profit margins for the paddy farmers apart from that it is suitable for the crop intensification as well and labor use efficiency is much more better here it is only one to two days versus 25 to 30 days of labor that you need to employ in the traditional method of farming so overall what we can say that it seems the dsr is much more better than the traditional method of rice farming despite that it has not been able to pick up the pace it has not been able to get adopted by the paddy farmers at the rate which government were expecting or even scientists were expecting so what went wrong now in this context as per the research that were carried out two main reasons can be highlighted the first culprit is what we can say is the soil texture now in the punjab or in other northwestern india where the rice is grown soil texture is something that plays a very important role so the scientists have said that if you want to use the dsr method of rice cultivation the farmers should avoid using such method in light textured soil because this method is more suitable and works better either in the heavy or medium to heavy textured soil now let us try to understand what do we mean by the word texture so basically if we talk about the soil 
soil has different different types of sediments so two types of sediments we can identify here one sediment which are more clay in nature and the other sediment which are sandy in nature so if the sandy sediments are in higher proportion and the clay sediments are in lower proportion we call such soils as the light texture soil on the other hand if clay texture are in higher proportion and sandy texture or sandy sediments are in low proportion we can say the soil is heavy or medium to heavy so basically it is the ratio of sand to clay which determines the texture of the soil and the dsr method works best for such kind of soil where the clay texture is basically less and the sandy sediments their concentration their percentage is quite high so the light textured soil do not retain water well that is the other problem because anyway we are using the less water volume in dsr and even the soils are not able to retain so much water third is what is farmers have started to begin or start do is as we have discussed in the beginning government is providing incentive for adopting utilizing dsr method almost to 1500 rupees per hectare so to take advantage of or to avail the benefits under incentive scheme some farmers have begun using the dsr in unsuitable soils for example in the light textured soil thus leading to the need for irrigation every second or third day and obviously yield becomes less the benefits that generally should happen or that generally should be associated with the dsr is not being observed here and also as the yield becomes low farmers become kind of uh, what we can say they start to develop a negative uh, mindset about the dsr method and as we know that the farming community are very well connected with each other by the word of mouth this start to uh, this basically proliferate this kind of mindset this kind of talk start to proliferate in the farming community the dsr method is bad as it is reducing the yield of the field and thus even such farmers who have access to what we can call as the heavy or medium to heavy textured soil they start to neglect or do not want to risk using dsr method uh, under the impression that it will lead to decline in the overall yield of the rice thus completely counteracts the water saving benefits of dsr and in fact ends up guzzling down more water this is something that we are seeing largely because soil texture is not being taken into account while using the direct seeding of rice method the second culprit is something that we can call as the iron content as well as the presence of weeds in the soil now scientists here have found out that in several places even if the texture of soil is good like medium textured soil they are unsuitable simply because they lack the required amount of iron which is needed in the dsr so fields especially which is previously cultivated with crops such as cotton maize and sugarcane generally we see lesser amount of iron content in them so after cropping these crops or sowing these crops harvesting these crops if the farmers immediately try to use dsr to participate uh, to basically uh, undertake the paddy cultivation then obviously you will not get the desired product so it severely impact yields and leads to major financial losses for the farmers simply because the iron content is higher now sometimes farmers might even have to transplant the crop anyway after a month or so leading to dsr losing its labor saving benefits as well and also if there is a large amount or number of weeds that are present in the field that also interferes with the dsr method overall decreasing the yield now what should be the solution for this problem so we know that dsr is something that the entire india or indian farming community indian agricultural scientists we can say or even governments are looking forward to because with passage of time what we are observing that india will face more and more water scarcity problem as the ground level depletes and the surface water is being consumed at a greater rate but what we can do to overall increase the adoption of dsr method so the first region that comes to mind that might have caused a slowdown of the adoption is a basic lack of awareness and understanding this can be as simple as soil texture and can be as difficult as understanding the content or mineral contents of the soils and their importance for the crops so experts believe that first of all the farmers need to be made aware that they should not use this method where the soil is not suitable for them for example in the light textured soil as the expected yields will be lower so farmers in those areas can still use the traditional method of rice cultivation 
सेकेंड कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव एजुकेशन ऑफ फार्मर इज की हेयर बिकॉज इट इज समथिंग विच इज अव टेक्निक एंड फार्मर जनरली दे आर रेजिस्टेंट टू अडोप्शन ऑफ न्यू टेक्निक because they are fearful that it will lead to massive losses if the yield declines so any departure from the age old tried and tested method of farming requires a nudge and that nudge can only be given if you are educating and training farmers properly third is extensive training program and ready helpline should be instituted and installed at the central level or uh, at the central level means at the state central level and also the farmers should be given hand holding support right from the beginning of the process that is from pre sowing all the way up to the harvesting so that if any farmer has any doubt any problem any issues is they are facing it can be resolved immediately and overall if you are able to do these three four steps it will instill confidence among the farmers regarding the efficacy of dsr and also once the method is start to show its result once the method is start to so the benefits that it, uh, that uh, we desire from it obviously again the farming community itself as you have said they are well connected with each other by the word of mouth the adoption will begin and will speed up so that is all about this particular video i hope you understood about the concept of dsr that is direct seeding of rice the benefits as well as the challenges in its adoption thank you very much